Chicago works. I'm Jim Williams. State Street hasn't seen traffic like this in decades, both vehicular and foot traffic. The demolishing of State Street took a year of construction, which ended. No, nothing. Uh, not yet, anyway. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Michael Thomas. Uh, the show is brought to you by the Board of Directors of Chicago Access Corporation. Uh, keep in mind, that's also a community service. We welcome your questions and comments for Alderman Colon at the number on your screen, which is 7381060. During the next half hour, we will do our best to get, a, get as many of your calls on the air as possible. And assisting us on the phones today is Paul Cody. Uh, Alderman is coming out in the cold today. Well, thank as you. As part of your job. Exactly. Um, I get paid to do these things. Ah. Let's uh, go to the phones. Uh, Gretchen on line one. Good evening, Gretchen. And what's your question this evening for Alderman Cologne? Um, my question as a resident of Logan Square is what does Alderman Cologne see as her main issues for economic uh, needs of the community, and what is she concentrating on? Uh, well, presently, we've, I would like to say in July, we've got a big uh, SNAP project awarded to our award, which means that we're going to economically jumpstart certain parts of the community, which is Armitage from Bloomingdale to Palmer Square, from Fairfield to St. Louis is phase one, and phase two is St. Louis to Hamlin. What does that mean? That means we're going to bring new businesses into the community where we're going to be able to provide jobs for the residents of that community and help get them to become part of the American dream. Everybody migrates to an area because they're looking for better opportunities and they're looking to get better education, better housing, and better employment. Um, we've got Delray Foods coming into the ward. We've got a couple of lofts. We've got people are going to be having the opportunity to do some facade rebate for their businesses or their home. And it's really a true partnership between the city and the residents of our community and the commercial district. We're also planning a pla uh, Plazas of Las Americas, which means it's a Plaza of the Americas. We're going to have an artisan center that's going to rep represent all the ethnic groups in our community. Hopefully, it's something similar to the Navy Pier, but of course, not as expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give small business people the opportunity to promote their cultural background and their ethnic uh, flavors, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, whether it's literature, whatever it may be. Now, are these actual stores or these are vendors? actual stores that are. It's not a mall. It's not a mega mall. It's like Navy Pier, but in a lower uh, level where people are going to be able to economically open up small businesses in this artisan center. So it'll be open year-round? It'll be open year-round. We're pushing to get a theater there. We're trying to hmm. get Rosa's Bar, which is a jazz place in our war that a lot of people don't know about, but they bring a lot of exciting jazz people into the community. And we have a nightclub called Las Vegas Nightclub that represents the Latin community, and they've been there for over 20 years. So we're trying to do a partnership with the residents, the business, and Richard Yates School is part of the project. We're going to have a building addition mm -hmm. and a campus park. Remember the days when we were growing up and we used to be able to go to that place play a lot and play volleyball and play yes, basketball and yes, do all those exciting yes. things that mom could watch us out the window and say, oh, my kid is safe. We're trying to do a lot of these projects. Or with my this. kid is up to something they shouldn't be up to. Well, so. I think our kids are good kids. We just need to look for alternatives. And we need to neutralize territories between people who want to take a direction different than what we have. And what we're doing is if we use the school lots mm -hmm. and do play lots for the teenagers and uh, some kind of um, stationary training centers and mm -hmm. indoor sports and outdoor sports, we do a partnership with the Park District, the Board of Education, and the parents of the community. I think we could all win because these kids need a place to go. So you get everyone involved. We get everybody involved. That's what our plan is, and we're going to be kicking it off this spring with Yates School, which is on Francisco, Cortland, and Richmond, and Darwin okay. School, which is on Belden, Albany, and Fullerton, and Ketsy. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question, Gretchen. Uh, we have Bill on two. Pim, good evening, and what's your question this evening for Alderman Cologne? Uh, my question is this, Alderman Cologne. There are many nearby public parks outside Logan Square that have open outdoor basketball courts. Are you opposed to current proposals for outdoor basketball facilities in Logan Square? 
I'm opposed to permanent outdoor basketball courts. I feel that we could use, we could do some kind of programming with portable basketball uh, equipment where there is some partnership with the Board of Education, the Park District, and the community. But it has to be a mandate where there is truly a partnership and that everybody involved takes a leadership role and it doesn't occur where a couple people volunteer for a month or two, we get the kids all excited, and then before you know it, it's all over. So I don't, uh, in fact, we took 32 kids to the mayor's uh, basketball holiday program, and they had a great time. I'm not against basketball. I just want it to be safe for everybody, and I want people to be able to have some kind of direction as to how we utilize the space and give people, everyone, an opportunity to be able to participate. Thanks for your question, Pim. Why don't we go over your, your office hours one more time, because it sounded like you were saying your office hours were like 24 hours, one day a week. So oh, it, it so feels that way, but um, we have a great team. We're always looking to improve our services, and we're always available to get advice from the community. Uh, we have a voicemail in case you're not available to see me or call us during the hours that you're busy, and we try to return the call as soon as possible. On Mondays, we have ward nights from, we have ward day from 9 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. Sometimes we extend it when necessary. When we're not able to see people who come in to see us, we try to make an appointment. Sometimes we have to cancel Mondays because I'm pulled away for some kind of meetings, whether it's in the community or with any of the committees that I serve on the city council, but we try not to do that. Okay. And the number at your ward office would be? It's 773-276-3535. Okay, and keep in mind that is the new 773 area code. Exactly. That is right. It is unforgiving right now if you dial 312. Our political forum is a community service of the Board of Directors of Chicago Access Corporation. This is a live interactive show. By calling the number on your screen, 738 you will be able to voice your question or comment and get a response from our guest this, e this evening, Alderman Colon of the 34th Ward. 35th. 35th. That's okay. Oh, I know. It's been a long one. day I'm off for by both one. of us. <laughs> off by one. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Al on line one. Good evening.